Welcome back. It's another bright day and I wished I was done last night. I worked like crazy during this weekend and uh, well I actually wish this was done like one and a half month ago first and then I wished it would be completed before my birthday and then I wished it would be done by this weekend and then tomorrow and so forth. It just takes time. Product development is not a straight journey. You always find new problems. Uh, yeah. It is what it is, but it's also fun. It's uh, I do enjoy it, but I really want to go out on the water. I mean, it's 26, 28 degrees Celsius right now outside, and I'd rather be out in a boat than building the boat motor. So if you're gonna start one like this, think about the time frame, then double it. That's yeah. It's not like normal project management when you're at like 1.3 sometimes as a as a dummy. But anyway, so. Yesterday I was building these kind of masts, just a horrible attempt at trying to get something that is extremely rigid uh, by forcing carbon fiber on a kind of a plastic shape. I don't know how this will look because, I mean, it's that thing doesn't want to go from this plastic, uh, uh, what's it called, the plastic uh, kind of uh, wing that I had built. Um, but anyways, so... Let's take this off and see how it looks like. Probably looks like shit. But yeah, yeah. And here it is. It's kind of nasty looking, but it hasn't fully cured. And I will wet sand this to shape, I think. So when it's fully cured, there is carbon fiber all along on both sides. And probably a lot, like three lines, three rolls. So this should become when it's fully, fully, fully cured. That's a little bit soft still, I can feel. Um, I did it last night after all. Um, so yeah, I'll just sand this to shape and hopefully this will become a little bit more like steel. And even steel isn't actually that stiff, I noticed. I was in a, I was in a shop looking, trying to get these and I mean, it's still a little bit wobbly. Carbon fiber is way more stiff. And I have the fibers running in this direction straight down because I want the stiffness in this direction. I'm actually getting tons of carbon at home, at least in my perspective. I bought like four meters, five meters times um, 1.2 meters, I think. I got a, a deal from Easy Composites. No sponsor, I'm just saying well, I got a great deal and sometimes they have these kind of, uh, they get big pieces or big rolls left over from factories and they sell them at a very cheap discount. So if you're doing something like that, and but that's unidirectional carbon fiber. This is not unidirectional. Unidirectional just has strength in one direction. It's yeah, in this direction, not in going in like this or moving in weird other directions. So yeah, let's let this cure and sand it off later today when it's fully, fully, fully cured. Okay, so next. I have these that I should connect the motor controller to the electric motor and for my love of my life I could not see how these were going to be crimped to a very small ESC cable. I mean, look at this, it's ridiculous. It's You can't crimp that together and make that hole. So I went to uh, foil.zone. Uh, which is a great website for anybody who's building a lot of e-foils. I'm also probably going to do one. I actually have a carbon master I got from China. Uh, but that's a little project. Probably not this year. Maybe next year. Let's see what my mind sets it to. But anyway, so, so I asked there, how the heck do you connect these? Because the Pipsky ESC and the motors are very popular there for these things. It's actually one of the ideas why I got, like, I was thinking about doing an e file but then I really wanted to do the outboard first. I said, you know, you make an outboard, it isn't that great, you want to make something good. Um, and they just said solder. <laughs> so some kind of sol I mean, a lot of soldering, a lot of heat, make it stick. I don't really, I don't love that idea, because it's still, I mean, that means that it mechanically has to get some bond here. But I don't see another choice, and what I'll have to do is to get some uh, shrink tube to kind of push around as hard as possible to kind of even more press it on them, but if that's what they say goes, then that's what we do. So, I guess I'll have to decide what ESC I have to use, and I did last night. So, after um, 
I had some thinking. I mean, I have two ESCs. One is a 100 amp, which that's 84 volts would be great, but I shouldn't be at 84 volt. I should be more like, I don't know, 37 volt nominal, which is 10 batteries in series. It's the nominal value of each cell in is uh, 2.7 times 10 in a row in a series. I mean, then um, then you get 37 volts, or and that tops out at 42 volts when it's fully charged. Um, so you stay below the 50 volts. If you use this controller, when it's maximum charge, and you run it at 100 amps, 120 amps, I should actually pick on this one, then you would get, uh, let's think about it, so 42 volts times 100, easy, 4200 watts, so you would get 4.2 kilowatts on this one. But you actually can take for 10 seconds about 120, so then you would get up to, well, a little bit over 5 kilowatt motor. Which is not a bad motor, but it's not a speed. It won't run really fast. Uh, so I decided actually to skip this one for now. I would use this for a different project. I don't really know what, but my friend might have a need for it. If you're watching, this might be yours. And see, I already did a horrible, all the hard work for you. This was terrible to connect. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go with a bigger ESC. So this is a hundred amp. I'm gonna put the three hundred amp on, and not that I'm gonna pull maximum. I mean, theoretically, if these cells were new, I could pull. So let's think about it. I have three point five sixty three amps in parallel, and you can draw three C, which means I could draw um, three times as much in an hour. Uh, which means I could, so let's say about 63, so, oh, 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 yeah, so that's 180, uh, 86 amps times 100, that's 18,200 watts. Now we're starting to get close to that, I mean, we're starting to get close to that 20 kilowatt motor that needs, and yeah, so I could pull that with this ESC, so I, I am dead scared of doing that though. I, I mean, this is still a DIY, 25 horsepower or 20, I don't know, 25, 26, I don't know where we get, but 18.9. We're starting to get real close to the limits of that motor. So it's doable. I could probably max it out for a few seconds, you know, just peak load for a few seconds, 20 kilowatts, and then go down to something more reasonable like 120, 100, uh, 100 150. That, that's definitely doable with my battery pack. So, I'm gonna put this away and I'm gonna solder on the new ones. That means I need new, new like these because these definitely won't fit because the connections here are like this, but on the other one it has a heftier tube and it has kind of an automatic, you just pull the cable in, oh, so nice, well, I mean the tube. You just pull the tube in and it has kind of this locking mechanism that locks around it and you're all set. So we'll go with that and hopefully, I have a long weekend, so in that weekend, oh, please let me be done with it so I can go out with it. And the weather is going to be shit, of course. I can saw the weather point. So once, it, it, this is typical of Sweden anyway, it's like, the weather is great when you work and then comes the weekend, usually, not this weekend, God, it's beautiful and I'm going to go out. Um, but yeah. But when I finally can go out with this, it's of course gonna be shitty weather. It's very, really, really typical for Sweden. Anyways, so we're ditching this one for now and we're going to a 300 amp controller. So I tried using this 120 water, it's pretty strong. And I also, at the same time, used this one to add heat around there. And my god, if this wasn't hard. So I tried to pre-teen first the, the yellow thing there to kind of create an area where it sticks easier. But I don't really feel that the, what is it called, flex core would to kind of connect to it. Let's see now if it's stuck. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, okay, we got a connection. I don't know how well that will hold though. I think I'll have to create some crimping some kind of crimping solution around this because I don't trust that. Hmm. Yeah. Once again, one of many things that are difficult. 
and a new and improved. So I wet sanded this inside and yeah I can't get it perfect but looks pretty okay. I think I'll just put the layer of epoxy around this. Maybe not, I'll just clear coat it I think. I mean it the point is not to have a perfect uh, perfect one but a pretty strong and stiff one and this'll do. It has this weird, really weird look right now. So yeah. Almost like the forged. This is like the forbidden words in the in the community when you have carbon fiber. There is nothing forged. It's molded in that in that case. This is kind of no, it's not molded. It's just under pressure skinned in a way. Yeah. But stiff as hell compared to before. A little bit give now. I took a lot of carbon away. But still, almost like the steel, I would say. I mean, the steel wasn't really that stiff either. So, but I think it's good enough. Let's clear coat it, and uh, yeah, I probably should heat it up to make sure that there is no water there before I clear coat. And then just stick it on the underside here. <sighs> oh, it's too large now. Maybe we should cut it a little bit smaller. Hey! It fits also. Yeah, it's okay. I was, it was always supposed to be like that. So, yeah. The other one was a total botch job. I made two. But yeah, that. I mean, this process of just taping and pushing it together, it's just terrible. You should probably have a unidirectional instead. So, yeah, sorry. This LED flickering light hit it. But yeah. Let's heat this up a little bit, get all the humidity gone, and just quick clear coat and let's be done with it. Maybe I'm not as done as I thought, because I put a few layers of clear coat and I noticed that the clear coat actually, against what I thought, would they actually filled up a lot of these kind of imperfections. So if I build up a little bit more with clear coat, I could probably just sand clear coat, which is way nicer than going inside and having to do with carbon fiber. It's, uh, I don't want to weaken the carbon fiber anymore, but, uh, yeah, just put a little bit more clear coat, wait a little bit, put more clear coat and, as it becomes thick and dries, and then sand it to perfection. So, uh, then it could look cool, get those imperfections away it would be real nice. So, okay, um, so you can see there's two cables coming from A, B, and C, and I have three cables here, and it doesn't matter which cable I connect them to. Well, it could go in reverse and so forth, but it doesn't really, really matter. So I could kind of just connect them, and then it would go in one direction, and then I would switch the poles on two, and it would go in the other direction. But the thing is, the cables here on the motor controller is AVG6, 7, 8, sorry, 8. But those cables are AVG6, and that means that they're thicker because they can handle more current. And if I connect one just to those, my bet is that it will be too weak. Or even worse, it will pull too much current through one. So I had to connect these in. And I went to Foil Zone, which is a great website because a lot of these people building their e-foils, they're using these Flipski uh, motor controllers. And they just told me you solder on with tons of heat, and this is what I got. <laughs> I used all the solder I had, uh, and I used both my solder and iron, but I then used also a gas burner to try to connect and just put tons of heat and what I did because I can't show you exactly how I did it was that first I just put solder in to kind of pre-tin these and I just put a ton of ton of ton of heat and I tried to even scrub it up a little bit to get a little bit metal connection and then when I saw that it was just you know melting nicely inside almost like a puddle of water floating around then I took it out then it was pre-tinned and then I put the first one in and then I just pushed and pushed and pushed one in together with the soldering iron until I could feel it was just totally soft inside and I could flatten the whole thing down to it. And then came the real trouble and that was connecting the second cable. So I forced first a tin over the first cable 
so that it was pretty thin even more than before and then I put the soldering iron just on the top of this and just forced and forced and that wasn't enough so I used the gas burner to just put tons of more heat to it you can see I kind of burned the cables a little bit so yeah now we have two AVG8 which I think is about six AVG so I don't remember the chart but yeah definitely if it can pull 300 amps it's going out of these cables and that's it so I still wonder why because in my world a 2 AVG can pull 100 amps but yeah, yeah it is what it is it's um, same shit is gonna happen here but that's easier I'm just gonna get a box there just parallel uh, connect these red and black ones and then pull one massive cable out of it to the connector to the to the connector to the battery cool so well, well one step forward so I'll have to put something over these because I have can't have them like this I want to do as and actually one told me like just do as they did on the uh, from the motor so I mean I looked at this and no well, you can't see shit it doesn't look like the connectors I had so I took it off and well tons of solder uh, yeah massive amount I guess but yeah I don't have the 300 watt soldering I have like a 120 which is not that bad but still not massive enough for this thus the gas burner okay let's think about what to do next